Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado, registered pharmacist number 12275. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other health care practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on the Bright Side helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system a regenerating system it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis and while some folks may call that healing system a miracle it really is just the way the body works if you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, formulations, ingredients, something you may have read about in the paper or something somebody may have told you about, we want to hear from you. Let us help clear up the confusion about ingredients, chemistry, nutrition, skin care. Yesterday, uh, Time Magazine had an article about skin cancer rates. You know, skin cancer rates are increasing. Uh, have triple, have doubled over the last 30 years, and that's despite the fact that everybody's wearing sunscreens and sunscreens with SPFs of 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s. And what is Time Magazine's answer to the question why skin cancer rates are up? We're not using enough sunscreen. Silly, silly, silly. Anyway, we'll be talking skin care. We'll talk a little skin cancer too here uh, in the coming days as we continue talking about the skin. If you have questions about skincare products or ingredients or the longevity products or ingredients, or if you have success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number today on the bright side. We'll get your calls here at the bottom of the hour. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products that you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please call the bright side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470, or head over to brightsideben.com and order products directly off the website. Okay, let's see. Uh, we're talking dry skin. We're talking skin care in general, skin health, in honor of my Truth Treatment products. Some of you already purchased the Truth Treatment products. I'd like to hear from you if you, if you want to give us a shout, 844-236-6010, what you think about them. If you notice any of the results, some of you now have used the Truth Treatment products for eight weeks or so. We started selling them well, about six weeks ago. We started selling them. Uh, 844-236-6010 if you have any comments or questions about the truth treatment products we're talking skin and we'll be talking skin here for a few more weeks if you have dry skin as we said yesterday and dry skin is very very common there's two elements that need to be addressed and neither of these two elements involve a moisturizing cream a moisturizing cream a moisturizing lotion a moisturizing product doesn't do anything except create the illusion of hydration, the illusion of moisture. You put your moisturizing product on your skin, you rub your finger along the grease and the wax and the preservative and the solvents and the propylene glycol and the glycerin that you just put on your skin. You rub your finger along there and you go, oh, I'm moisturized. No, you're not moisturized. You're slickerized. You got a little slick oil on your skin and for some reason or another, we got this belief that that slick sensation is moisture. Nothing says hypnotic trance hypnotic marketing trance more clearly than rubbing a cream, a lotion, a wax and oil complex on your hands or in your face or in your body and then feeling the product as it's sitting there on your skin and believing that we've actually created some kind of change in the skin. That's hypnosis. That's a trance. It doesn't even make sense. The unpleasant condition called dry skin or technically xerosis, X-E-R-O-S-I-S, is, to, uh, is a combination, it's caused by a combination of two factors. Number one, a defect in the production of natural moisture factors. The skin makes its own natural moisture factors. These natural moisture factors are called the natural moisture factor. That's what the scientific term is. It's made up of amino acids like arginine, for example. 
Uh, it's made up of complex sugar molecules, something called hyaluronic acid. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. By the way, you can't put hyaluronic acid on top of your skin and expect to get moisturized. There's all these products out now, and I have people asking me who know a little bit about skincare, about hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is inside, underneath the barrier. That's where it traps water, not a little bit on the surface, but you're not going to really moisturize your skin by putting hyaluronic acid on top of your skin, but it is part of how the skin naturally hydrates itself. And then there's the fats, the lipids, the oils, sebum secretions, most of, or many of which come from cholesterol. And these are also natural ways that the skin moisturizes itself. This, is this a surprise to anybody? The skin is supposed to stay moist. It has moisturization properties. To rub a cream on the skin, that's not going to do anything. The moisturization properties are underneath. The second mechanism involves the barrier. This is what we've been talking about, the skin barrier. The skin barrier has to be intact. Now, skin barrier breaks down, or the skin barrier, skin barrier defects take place in a... In degrees, the most extreme case of a skin barrier defect is eczema. Eczema is when you have literally you have patches of skin with no barrier on it. Be very, it's a really unpleasant condition and can cause some serious problems with skin dryness and skin irritation. But there's milder forms of eczema. It may not even be called eczema. It's just poor barrier development. The barrier doesn't develop, develop as well as it might. This especially happens as aging kicks in and as nutritional deficiencies kick in. When we left the ocean, animals lived in the ocean. Human beings and our, our, our uh, ancestors came out of the ocean hundreds of millions of years ago. But when we came out of the ocean, we had to develop a barrier on the top of our bodies, on the surface of our bodies, to keep the water in. The body is 60 to 70 percent water, so it had to develop a barrier. This barrier is made up of hard cells and water-resistant extrusions, chemical extrusions, and they keep the water inside. The barrier comes from keratin cells, keratinocytes. And how these cells move and how these cells grow and how these cells divide, how these cells extrude stuff, how these cells form the barrier is a very complicated process. It requires vitamins. It requires a healthy body. You can't have inflammation. You got to have a proper nutrients and fats. All of these are required for this barrier to form correctly. Lots of things have to go right. Is it a surprise to anyone that these things don't always go right, that there's nutritional deficiencies, vitamin A deficiencies, vitamin E deficiencies, essential fatty acid deficiencies? God forbid if some doctor puts you on a statin drug, that's going to suppress cholesterol production. You're not going to be able to make the barrier or the, or the, um, or, or the moisture factors as effectively. The skin does lots and lots of things. You can't just be smearing stuff on the skin and expecting it to get healthy. The skin is a, a fully-fledged organ of the body. It makes vitamins. It makes hormones. It's an immune organ. It secretes protective chemicals. It secretes inflammatory chemicals. It secretes antibacterial chemicals. It's got bacteria on it, probiotics, good bacteria on it. And it makes its own natural sunscreen, by the way. And it makes its own natural moisture factors. The skin is absolutely amazing. It looks like nothing's happening. You look at your arm, you know, it looks like nothing's happening. But this is an incredibly dynamic system. Just as dynamic as the heart or the spleen or the lungs or the liver. Just as organ-like as any other organ in the body. Uh, because it's covered with this hard coating, it just looks inert. It is not inert. And it's important that we recognize this so that we treat it correctly. The skin regulates temperature. It's a shock absorber. It emits chemicals to communicate to our friends and our neighbors and our enemies that we're here, pheromones, chemicals that communicate love and safety and fertility, as well as territorial message messages. But the main role of the skin, the number one role of the skin is to act as a barrier, to protect the internal structures of the body, to prevent the entrance and interference of microbes, fungus, and bacteria, and ultraviolet radiation as well, and to prevent against mechanical injury, and then the most important role, which is to keep moisture in. Researchers can assess the moisturization properties of the skin by TEWL, we talked about that yesterday, transepidermal water loss, and this is how they determine how effective a so-called moisturizer is. This is why wax and Vaseline and oils have become the mainstay of moisturizer formulations. They decrease water loss. They seal the surface. The problem is you don't want to be sealing stuff. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back after this. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here 
in just a couple of moments. 866-735-2470 is the phone number for the Brightside Ben phone team. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised on the program, the Healthy Star Pack, the Biolumin Nightly Essence. We're going to talk to uh, the manufacturer of the Biolumin Nightly Essence tomorrow in the formulator, uh, Troy Apule, I believe he says his last name. Uh, we'll talk to him tomorrow uh, on the bright side. If you're interested in purchasing the Bioluminitely Essence, the Fucoid Z, or the Healthy Star Pack, or any of the Yongevity products you're advertised on the program, call the phone team at 866-735-2470. Make sure you ask about joining the Brightside Ben team also for a one-time $25 fee. You can start yourself a Yongevity business, earn thank you checks, get your products at the wholesale price, and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Okay, we're talking skin. Some of you may have seen uh, Time Magazine this week. Uh, headline here, or, or a headline on the story, why skin cancer rates are up. Time Magazine says skin cancer rates are up because we're not wearing enough sunscreen. Skin cancer rates are up for the same reason all cancer rates are up, is because we're not healthy. Skin cancer is a sign of a skin cell that's freaked out like all cancer. It's not the sun that's causing it, even though the sun may be stimulating it a little bit. Cause of cancer is a stressed out cell. That means we're not eating correctly. That means we're not, nutri uh, we're not supplementing correctly. We're not nutritionally uh, co competent. We don't have enough vitamin C and vitamin E and essential fatty acids. We don't have enough oxygen. We're inflamed. These are all the reasons why we have cancer. And for Time Magazine and your dermatologist and doctors to blame the sun and not enough sunscreen. Oh, by the way, sunscreens are toxic chemicals, no matter what anybody tells you. They are toxic chemicals. I'm not saying that poetically. I'm saying that literally. That's why they're regulated as drugs. And they become more toxic. Oh, this is really good. They become more toxic when they're activated by the sun. And they become less active. You've got to wear sunscreen. And by the way, there's a difference between sunscreens and sunblocks. If you've got to wear sunscreen, octomethoxycinamate or octacrylene or oxybenzone, wash it off as soon as you can and don't wear one unless you need it. Absolutely, positively need it. And use zinc oxide if you have to use a topical, if you want to use topical uh, protection, use zinc oxide, and then use vitamin C afterwards, fatty vitamin C afterwards when you come in from the sun. You know, your, sun's, your skin is still burning even when you come in from the sun. You're still getting inflammatory effects on your skin even when the sun goes down, even when you go into the house from the sun, your, st your skin is still activated. There's still inflammation that's occurring. So after you come in from the sun, get your vitamin C, your fatty vitamin C on the skin. You'll help protect your skin from the post-sun inflammation that occurs even when you're not laying out. If you have dry skin, it's not a moisturizer problem. I saw a commercial yesterday for, uh, for uh, a product called Eucerin. Now Eucerin is, a, is the go-to in, in the world of pharmacy. It's one of the go-to skin moisturizers the pharmacists recommend. I don't like moisturizers, the concept of moisturizers. The concept of moisturizers doesn't make sense to me, especially considering the fact that the skin makes its own moisture factors. Now it's true, by sealing things up with wax and oil, which is what a moisturizer is, you're going to keep water in a little bit, but the skin has to breathe, and the skin makes its own moisture factors, and when you wear a moisturizer, you suppress those. Moisturizers do a, have a sealing effect. They have ingredients, and, you'll, and you want to be an ingredient deck reader, by the way. Steril alcohol, cetyl alcohol, cetyl palmitate. If you looked at these ingredients before they got put into your cream, they would look just like wax. You could make a candle out of them. Cetyl palmitate is a wax. Cetyl alcohol is a wax. Steril alcohol is a wax. Glycerol monosterate is a wax. Literally, a wax. If you squished it together, stuck a, a wick in there, you can have a candle. And then you throw in some mineral oil, which is the active ingredient in many of these moisturizers. All of this stuff is going to suppress biochemistry, suppress biology. In the days of Helena Rubinstein, who's a, given credit for starting the skincare business, the modern skincare business at the beginning of the 20th century, 1910, 1915, she came over from Russia and she decided she was going to help women. Uh, she was going to start a business helping women stay beautiful. That was her deal. We're going to help women. She didn't know what the skin was. She's a, she was a housewife from, from Russia. She didn't know what the skin was. She didn't know what, what nutrition was. Nobody did. In 1910, 1920, we didn't even know what vitamins were. We barely knew what hormones were. We certainly didn't know that the skin had its own moisture factors in it. We certainly didn't know that the skin was an immune organ. We didn't even know what the immune system was. Helena Rubenstein may have been a sweet lady. Maybe not. I don't know. She was certainly a good business lady. But she didn't know what 
the biochemical nature of the skin was. She didn't know what biology was. The problem is today we're still using Helena Rubinstein's techniques of moisturizing the skin, but we know that the skin today, we know, we realize it's a, a tremendously dynamic and active system, but we still have skincare professionals, estheticians, skincare uh, doctors, dermatologists, medical, medical people, skincare companies pushing these silly products on us that are based on a science and a technology that's from the turn of the 20th century. So I saw a commercial yesterday, or a couple days ago, for a product called Eucerin. Eucerin E-U-C-E-R-I-N, Eucerin, has a reputation for being the dermatologist and the pharmacist's go-to choice for treating dry skin. Now you go into the ingredient deck, and you always want to be an ingredient deck reader. You see the ingredient deck, first ingredient on Eucerin cream. The, and I'm just using this as an example. You could take uh, Lubriderm or Cetaphil or Am, Amlac or any other standard product, standard moisturizing product. You'll see the first ingredient is going to be water, and it's usually 80 to 90%. It's a cream, maybe 70%. That's a lot of water. 70 to 90 percent of your cream or lotion is going to be water right off the top. The next ingredient in use are mineral oil. Now I've been formulating for a long time so I know that the mineral oil is in there about 10 percent. So you got your water maybe 70 percent, 75, you got mineral oil at 10 percent, bingo, you're up to almost 90, 85, 90 percent of your product is water and mineral oil. Your use and this is the, the premium go-to moisturizing product folks. The third ingredient, isopropyl myristate, it's a fake oil. Isopropyl myristate is a pretend oil. It's a cheap oil or oil-like substance. Again, not going to do anything for your skin. It's just going to give you a little slick sensation. That's another 5%. So now you're talking about 90% plus of your product is water, mineral oil, isopropyl myristate, which is a fake oil. Fourth ingredient, PEG-40 sorbitan peroleate. What's that? An emulsifier. That's in there about 2%, and not a very nice emulsifier either, by the way. Uh, so now you're up to over 90% of your product. This is Eucerin. This is the go-to moisturizing lotion or cream. Water, mineral oil, isopropyl myristate, PEG-40 sorbitan, peroleate. Fifth ingredient, glycerol linoleate. Another wax. Wax-like substance. That's probably 1% or 2%. Oh, here's the active ingredient. You ready for this? One, two, three, four, five. Sixth ingredient, sorbitol, sugar. Sorbitol, yes, the same stuff that's in diabetic candies. Why would they put sorbitol in eucerin? Because it absorbs a little bit of water. It's, they say it's a humectant. Humectant is an ingredient that absorbs a little bit of water. Seventh ingredient, propylene glycol. That's another slickerizer. Doesn't do anything for your skin. Just creates a little slick sensation. Next ingredient, acetyl palmitate, a wax, to give it a little thickening and a little body. Magnesium sulfate and aluminum stearate, again, thickeners, kind of puff the product out a little bit. Next ingredient, the ninth ingredient, lanolin alcohol. That's in there about a quarter percent maybe. And that's got a little bit of kind of gooiness to it, maybe seals the barrier a little bit. And then you're into your nasty preservatives, something called BHT, butylated hydroxytoluene. That one's not all that bad. But then you come into two really nasty preservatives, methyl chloro ice thiazolinone, methyl isothiazolinone. Two very unpleasant preservatives. That's your go-to moisturizing product, folks. There's nothing in there. <laughs> Are you kidding me? This is the state of the skincare business, but if you've got dry skin, there is truly stuff you could do topically as well as internally. I'll tell you a couple of them, a couple of things you could do when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Virtual. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central, and 24-7 on the archive page at brightsideben.com. You can order products directly from the website. You can order the Healthy Star Pack and the Ultimate EFAs. If you really want to, if you have dry skin, essential fatty acids are really what you want to be thinking about. Also, fat absorption. Always got to focus internally. Yes, it's true. There's things you could do topically for the skin, especially topical vitamins and topical vitamin C is really super helpful when it comes to truly moisturizing the skin for a lot of reasons. Topical vitamin C is involved in stimulating the production of natural lipids or fats, moisture factors. It's involved in helping produce an effective skin barrier. And vitamin C's got protective benefits as well. It's got to be fatty vitamin C. And we'll be talking about that uh, tomorrow. Uh, we'll, we'll continue talking about that for the next few days. I'm also going to tell you about a protein that's really, really important. Uh, it's part of how the skin barrier is formed, and it's something that you don't hear a lot about. But this is a protein 
that uh, whose production is defective in the case of eczema, in the case of dry skin, uh, and this is also protein, that as it breaks down, as it naturally breaks down on the skin surface, it produces its own moisture. It produces moisture factors, and it also produces sun protection factors. Do you think this protein is important stuff? You better believe it is. Vitamin E can be helpful. Uh, cholesterol, super duper helpful, topical, topical cholesterol, very helpful, topical cholesterol it turns on the, the growth process, the barrier recovery process. So many really, truly good things you could do for your skin. You don't have to resort to these silly, silly wax oil moisturizer, so-called moisturizer products. Anyway, we'll continue talking tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll also talk about a really interesting element that's found in the skin. It's something a lot of folks talk about. It's really important, uh, can be important as a nutritional supplement. It's called hyaluronic acid. And hyaluronic acid is now uh, becoming a kind of a catchphrase in terms of skincare products. I saw Neutrogena has a product with hyaluronic acid. I'm going to tell you tomorrow why hyaluronic acid is not all that when it comes to topical, topical products. Why you got to be uh, a little bit skeptical when it comes to hyaluronic acid in a topical skincare product, as important as hyaluronic acid is for the skin and, and as an internal supplement, it's not really very effective topically. We'll talk about that tomorrow as we continue talking skin health on the bright side. Time to hit our phones. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let us go to, uh, da, 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 let's go to Kelly in Texas. She's been holding on for 20 minutes or so. What's up, Kelly? Welcome to the bright side. Thank you. Hey. I wanted to find out um, where to begin. I just heard about your products this week, and okay. I've been dealing with kind of a inflamed stomach lining that never heals completely. Okay. All right. Well, inflamed stomach lining, you want to think food. First of all, what makes you think you have an inflamed stomach lining? Uh, I was. Di they told me that when I spent a couple of days in the emergency room, like in 2011. They call it a gastritis or something, do they say? What do they call it technically? They just I, said inflamed stomach. I don't actually remember the technical. They just said an inflamed stomach line. Okay. All right. Well, here's a couple of things. First of all, the most important thing to consider is food. Okay. So you want to notice what foods cause a problem. Do a food diary. Write down everything you eat. Notice the foods that are causing a problem. Then eliminate those foods. Second thing you want to do is start to rebuild that lining. Now, I'm, I, I don't know necessarily. You say stomach lining, but it could have been the intestinal lining too. You sure it was the stomach lining and not the intestinal lining? I'm not positive. Okay. It could be either way. So you, we want to start okay. rebuilding it. A couple of things for rebuilding the lining, uh, digestive tract lining, um, uh, anything that helps you with arthritis or building connective tissue, building joint tissue is also going to help you build and strengthen the digestive tract, not so much the lining, but the musculature underneath. That means cartilage containing products. Use glucosamine. If you're using the longevity products, use the glucogel caps, bone soup where you take real chicken, real, a real chicken chicken and dissolve the cartilage in the water and make chicken soup out of the out of a real chicken. Use a little apple cider vinegar in the water to dissolve the cartilage. You can get high al uronic acid supplements. That's what we were just talking about. That could be very helpful. And then if you're going to use the longevity products, get on the Z radical or the Fucoid Z, which is made with algae. And the algae has a, a, a sugar complex component that is very important for helping rebuild the digestive lining. Uh, vitamin C is also important and as are essential fatty acids and zinc is a super important mineral for helping rebuild that digestive lining. A couple last things for you. Uh, number one, uh, use stomach acid support supplements. The more stomach acid you're producing, the less likely you are to have bacterial infection. And this is a common, a common, a, a common cause of digestive lining impairment. Uh, H. pylori particularly, so making sure you're making enough stomach acid. Use apple cider vinegar after all your meals. Get on something called betaine, B-E-T-H-I-N-E, betaine HCL. You'll find that in the ultimate enzymes. Use your ultimate enzymes after meals, and then a little bit of apple cider vinegar with your ultimate enzymes. You may want to even explore going to a pharmacy uh, or getting your doctor's prescription for HCL hydrochloric acid drops and doing a couple hydrochloric acid drops after meals. It's a little bit more intense than apple cider vinegar, but it can be pretty effective as well. So you got lots of strategies. Last but not least, a good probiotic supplement and fermented foods, as well as fiber. Uh, grind your own uh, uh, vegetables in a Vitamix and make vegetable juice with fiber. Also using fermented veggies and 
the bioluminightly essence. Uh, probiotics are very important for helping stabilize the entire digestive tract, but they can also have a beneficial effect on the lining. So doing a food diary, eliminating problem foods, and then all the digestive support, digestive enzymes, probiotics, Fucoid Z, glucogel caps, cartilage-containing products, uh, and also bone soup or chicken soup with the bones. Lots of strategies there for you. Is that helpful, yeah. ma'am? Yes, thank you so much. Good deal. Take care. Have a beautiful day. Thanks so much for calling. All right, Mary in Michigan, welcome to the Bright Side. What's up? Yeah, hi, uh, Ben. Um, yes. I'm not sure exactly how to phrase this question, but uh, okay. All right. Um, I have um, uh, heart arrhythmia. Okay. And uh, and I I'm, I'm I've got one specific question. I'm trying real hard to work on it and give myself the, the nutrients and things, but I'm, you know, 68 years old and my digestion's not good. And anyway, okay. long, long so story. But anyway, let me, let me, let me get more. to my one specific question. Okay. I know I have um, uh, oh, osteoporosis of the jaw. Okay. And I, I had a, um, I had a uh, biofeedback test done, and he said my heart's strong. It's just not beating exactly right. Um, so... Uh, I, my question is, I've got some abscesses. Now, my teeth are all good. I think the abscesses are coming from the osteoporosis and maybe not a sufficient anchorage for the teeth or something. But anyway. Are you, are you on any medicine? No. Okay. All right. Well, listen, let's, this is not a complicated issue. I mean, it sounds complicated because there's all these different things going. You've got osteoporosis. You've got the heart problem. You've got uh, abscesses, et cetera. So it sounds like there's a lot of stuff happening. But really what's occurring, Mary, is your body's breaking down. Right. That's basically what's happening. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, so let's cut to the chase here. You're falling apart. The body's breaking down. I'm, but I'm, saying, I'm, not saying, I'm saying that with love because we're going to turn it around for you. All right. The heart arrhythmia is telling me that there's some kind of emergency. This is what a heart arrhythmia is, really. It's a sign that the the body is in major distress mode and the electrical conductivity in the heart, the electrical energy in the heart is not flowing as it should following this kind of inflammatory distress response. So we got to figure out why is the body in distress, why is your body in distress? And there's lots of reasons why it is. The first most important reason, and this is also going to be associated with, um, with heart arrhythmias, is a lack of oxygen hypoxia, low blood yeah. oxygen. Okay, yeah. and it's very, very important that everybody out there recognizes that hypoxia, low blood oxygen is resting behind almost all health issues. Now, you got to do other things, too, because the uh, if you have an inflammation that's coming in from the digestive system or blood sugar, you know, that's going to block oxygen as well. So it's not just a question of breathing, but that can be very, very helpful. Hang tight, Mary. We'll finish up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. All right, we are back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Mary in Michigan. Mary, a couple things here, okay? Uh, okay. We'll take care of you, and, and you should start to notice results pretty darn quickly once you do a few of these things. First of all, okay. slow, deep breathing, okay? That's yeah. going to stabilize the heart rhythm, and it's going to also uh, get you the oxygen your cells need to do their recovery and healing work. That's always fundamental. Nutrition's okay. important. Food's important. Sugar's important, or lack of it, or avoiding it. But nothing is more important than oxygenation and blowing off carbon dioxide. When you, when you exhale, by the way, you're blowing off acid, toxicity, as well as carbon dioxide. So slow, deep breathing. And when you're slow, deep breathing, you're always breathing in through your nose and out through your nose. In through mm -hmm. the nose, out through the nose. Mm -hmm. Nose is for breathing, mouth is for eating. So <laughs> keep, your mouth, keep your mouth closed and in through the nose and out through the nose. And you, the, key, the key word here is slowly. If you mm -hmm. go too fast, you'll actually, you'll actually initiate a stress response, which you don't want to do. And by the way, fast, shallow breathing is a great way to wake up. If you're driving and you're feeling drowsy or you're, if you're in a meeting or you're in a lecture and you feel like falling asleep, doing quick, shallow breathing is a great way to, to wake up, to get you some quick energy. Actually, it's stress energy, so it's not really great, clean energy, but it'll still, right. it'll still wake you up in an emergency. The alternative is relaxing the body, opening everything up. By the way, right. if you take a hot tub or a hot bath or a, <coughs> excuse me, or a hot shower, that will have the same effect. 
So anything you could do to open up your, your respiratory tract and open up the blood vessels, slow, deep breathing is a great way to do that. And you can do it from the comfort of your couch. That's first of all. And by the way, if you notice your heart's going into rhythm, arrhythmias, uh, a poor rhythm, slow, deep breathing can stabilize that. Making sure you're focusing on the exhale. Next thing you want to do is you want to start to control the amount of sugar you're eating. High blood sugar will mess up your heart. High blood sugar will cause an inflammatory response that will make it difficult for cells to get oxygen. So staying away from sugar as best as you can. The only sugar I consume is in fruit. That's still, it's the same thing. Just as bad as anything else. You you do get some good things in the fruits, of course, but the sugar is still sugar. In fact, the fruit Fructose can be can be actually be more problematic in some ways than glucose. So yeah, still, you want to be careful with that. I'm not saying zero tolerance, Mary, or right. anybody listening, but just control it. All right. And then the third thing is is you got to start focusing on digestive health. As long as you got stuff coming in, and it sounds like you do, stuff coming into your blood through the digestive tract that's causing a problem, and you'll know it by digestive symptoms. It's going to be very difficult to reverse the osteoporosis or control the heart rhythm. Right. So, right. So f- my, but my concern was. I know that, that, that rotten teeth and bad gums can damage your heart. That I yes. know. It's a circle. So I, the heart right. damages, the heart co- your heart problems and your internal problems cause the problems with the gums and the teeth, and then that feeds back in a circle and causes heart problems. So you got to, okay. that's so, why you got to. So, my, so I'm concern, I've, been, I've been trying to save these teeth because the abscesses don't bother me. Then apparently I'm controlling them fairly well. But, but um, I, if I should have them pulled, I should have them pulled rather than Well, I can't tell you so. about having them pulled, but I can tell you that you're falling apart and your body's melting. You ever see The Wizard of Oz? Have you seen yeah, The Wizard of Oz, yeah, man. Remember it. the end of The Wizard of Oz, what the witch says? She yeah, goes, yeah. I'm melting, and she turns into a puddle. That's you, Mary. Now, I'm trying to stop that for you, though. I'm trying to stop Wait. that procedure. Well, yeah? in your opinion, would the abscesses be the I, same I, as having the rotten teeth? Yes. Abscesses okay. are a sign of infection. It's a sign that tissue's breaking down. And, and I don't mean to be gross here, but I'm just going to be frank. It's, not, it's a sign that tissue is rotting and bacteria yeah. are starting to digest it. it you're, yeah. you're basically dissolving. We yeah. got to stop this. This is not I'm good. I'm, I'm literally melting. Cause I'm you're like, melting. You're, you're melting. But, but I'm not saying that to insult you or to be I mean. Know that. I'm saying that because we want to fix it. So right, first thing you that. first thing you do, your deep breathing. Your second thing okay. you do, you stabilize the blood sugar. Get on the sweeties. Make sure you're uh, eating more protein and more coconut oil every time you want bread and pasta and fruit. Try to steer yourself into protein and coconut oil and butter. And then get on the Healthy Start Pack. Do a food diary. Start to focus on which foods are causing your problems. Get on the Biolumin Nightly Essence. Get on your Ultimate Enzymes. Do apple cider vinegar after all your meals. All of the things that you would be doing if you were, say, an athlete or if you were a bodybuilder. Right. Well, that's how exactly. Much, how much protein would you say? A there's no. There's no how much you want to go by. It doesn't really work that way. And anybody who tells you how much grams per pound of body weight isn't really giving you the straight scoop. Everybody's going to be different. For you, you're going to need more protein than somebody who's not breaking down because your body has to recover. However, if you're not absorbing or digesting your protein, you can cause more harm than good. And here's another thing about protein, as important as protein is. If you're not working out and you're not stimulating the growth of tissue, that protein is going to go onto your butt and get get turned into fat and sit on your butt. So you can get fat by sitting there and eating a lot of protein. Everybody who's doing this, you know, the paleo diet, the high protein diet, as far as protein, uh, protein's great stuff. It's very, very important. But if you're not using the protein, if your body's not turning that protein into muscle, it's going to end up sitting around like fat. So, you know, you can't just eat protein. You got to do some building work. So in addition to making sure you're getting enough protein, you want to absorb it. So you do your protein with your ultimate enzymes and your apple cider vinegar and Get yourself in the gym or, or do some resistance training at home with a rubber band. Do something that will build muscle so your body is using that protein. So you're going into what we call anabolic or building mode. Right. Lots of things you could do there, though, Mary. What I can tell you for sure is you don't have a medical problem. You have a lifestyle problem. Oh, I know through, that. <laughs> good deal. Through deep breathing. I have a doctor problem. You pretty much. Aren't worth you know, <laughs> pretty, they're not going to be able to help you, and I don't want to rip no, on doctors. But they, did, they just, didn't help me for years, and I think they're what put me in this position. But anyhow. Very could very well be. So anyway, I'm going to move on, Mary, because i got a All bunch right, of calls thank here. thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Take care. Take care. Deep breathing. Control your sugar. Take care of your digestive system. Make sure you got enough protein. And then uh, some anabolic or, or resistance training to build up muscle. All right, RC in California. What's up, my friend? How you doing, buddy? RC. Yes, what's up, bro? How you doing, man? Hey, 
can you mix ascorbyl palmitate and uh, powder forming capsules with moisturizing lotion? No, ascorbyl palmitate, and, and you're cutting out there, RC, but I heard you say, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, ascorbyl palmitate, make your own in a moist, you break open an ascorbyl palmitate capsule and put it in a moisturizing lotion. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. No, ascorbyl palmitate, and there's a reason why you don't see ascorbyl palmitate in very many products, although if you go to my truth products, you'll find uh, omega-6 healing cream made with a bunch of ascorbyl palmitate. Uh, ascorbyl palmitate is very difficult to work with. It's like a, it's inert. It's stiff. It's like a rock. It doesn't do anything until it's broken down. Now, you can break it down through some creative chemistry, which is how I did it with my omega-6 healing cream, but it won't break down just by adding it to a moisturizing cream. You're not going to get very much benefit from it, which is why you got to buy my omega-6 healing cream, because I figured it out for you. So and that's on truth, truth, to, uh, to pretty much, pretty much. You'll, you'll, you're not going to see more than 1% or so, even less, half percent of scorbyl palmitate in the very many topical products. If you use my truth treatment product, you'll get 12% of scorbyl palmitate because I'm a chemist. I figured, that, I figured it out quite a few years ago, right. actually. Uh, and so you can use that. Uh, or if you want to make your own fatty vitamin C, you might try mixing. It's still not going to work very well. I was going to say mix your scorbyl palmitate in some straight oil, but it's still not going to work. Ascorbyl palmitate is just very, very stiff and solid. It doesn't react very effectively. Uh, so you'll have you have to go to truthtreatments.com and uh, check out the Omega-6 healing cream. That's 12% ascorbyl palmitate. Thanks for your call, RC. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Mary in Washington, welcome to the bright side. What's up? Mary, Mary, Mary. Going oh, once. Hi. Hey, Mary. What's up? I'm here. Hey. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I started to have low right um, abdominal pain. Okay. I just kind of manned up and dealt with it, figured it was gas, something I ate. Okay. But it ended up being a, I had a CT scan. She was worried it was the appendix. Okay. Um, I have a avocado size ovarian cyst. I've had a partial hysterectomy. Oh, my goodness. Um, you, you just have one or you have multiple cysts? Um, I just, I have one, but it wow. has actually a crease in it, so it looks like two. Okay. I have well, not had an ultrasound yet. Well, here's um, the thing. you got two words to know when you have cysts. The first word is estrogen, and the second word is sugar or insulin. And those are the two elements that you want to control. Anytime there's growths, cysts or fibroids or skin tags, anytime cells are dividing rapidly, endometriosis, for example, anytime you have cells dividing rapidly or growths, you want to think about estrogen and you want to think about insulin. Now, when I say think about estrogen, I'm talking about how the body processes estrogen, and that usually means a digestive issue. Estrogen is a fatty substance, a fatty hormone, and it gets broken down into many, many different types of estrogen. So you have three main estrogens, and they all get broken down into junior your estrogens or types of estrogens and these breakdown products the ratios and their proportions are very complicated and when they get thrown off that's one of the ways that cysts develop in fibroids and endometriosis it sounds like fat hysterectomy that you have a history that way get yourself on the biolumin nightly essence number one three capsules in the morning three capsules at night use the healthy start pack i'd be doing nine essential fatty acid capsules focus on fat metabolism and fat absorption and then uh, treat yourself like a pre-diabetic or a diabetic use the Sweeties product and start to stabilize or st at least uh, minimize your intake of fast-burning sugars and carbohydrates and fruits. And then, of course, the he whole healthy star pack. That goes without saying. You might also want to throw in the ultimate enzymes and the ultimate selenium, which has anti-estrogen or estrogen protection properties. So many things you could do. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening, friends. Tomorrow we'll continue talking skin, and we'll talk a little BioLumin Nightly Essence with the formulator and manufacturer. Uh, thanks for listening. Have yourselves a wonderful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Folks, bye for now.